and welcome to my series on bow technique Jeff Jack 40 variations. Jeff Jack's 40 variations are probably the best thing you can do for your bow technique. They're short, comparatively easy to learn, and each one concentrates on one or two aspects of bow technique. The way I would suggest to practice them is to practice them about five or at the most 10 minutes a day for a while until you feel it's improved a bit, until you feel a bit more familiar or a bit more relaxed about the whole thing, and then move on to the next one because it's a combination of all of them which will do absolute wonders for your bow technique. About fingerings, I just use the fingerings which are most comfortable for me. I suggest you do the same because you want to be able to concentrate on your right hand and don't make it too difficult for your left hand. Lots of them are possible only in the first position. If you feel more comfortable there, do that. There's a couple of preparatory exercises I would like to show you, which are basically about bow technique, which we will need for these 40 variations. The first thing is sound production. Um, there are three components for sound production. That's speed of bow, pressure of bow, which I like to refer to as weight of bow on the string, and point of contact. That would be a low point of contact is close to the fingerboard, and a high point of contact is close to the bridge. So if you are playing with a high speed of bow, very little weight of bow on the string, and a low point of contact, you will get a soft flotando sound. If you then increase the weight of the bow on the string and decrease the bow speed, so your bow will automatically travel towards the bridge. The same thing reverse, if you're at the bridge, you're playing with not much bow speed, quite a bit of weight of the bow on the string, that's this. If you then decrease the, the weight and increase the speed of bow, your bow will automatically travel back to the fingerboard. Practice that moving from to the bit here and back. Practice that on single notes, open strings, whatever's easiest and most comfortable for you, and then implement it into your scale practicing so that you get really used to working with these three components for sound. The next thing we need is the finger action of the right hand. A way of starting to learn this is by using the Fingerstrich by Karl Flesch. That's really easy. You put the bow into the, uh, onto the string somewhere in the middle of the bow where it's comfortable. And then you curl your fingers, bend your thumb, and by doing that sort of pull the stick of the bow into your hand, you'll get a small up bow. Then you do the reverse. You stretch your fingers and sort of push the bow away from your hand. You get a small down bow. Practice that until you're familiar with that movement. Don't use your arm, it's only the fingers. When you feel familiar with that, you can start working on making the movement nice and smooth and try to get that little stroke to sound as good as it possibly can. That would be something like this. When you're familiar with that, Start doing that in all sorts of areas of the bow. You do that by wandering. You start in the middle. You use a little bit more up bow than down bow. And that will transport you to the frog of the bow. When you reach the frog of the bow, practice that quite a lot. That's very difficult because your forefinger of your right hand has to carry the entire bow weight. So that's quite difficult down there. Have patience, practice it. You need it for really smooth bow changes at the front. Then you do the same thing the reverse way around. You use a little bit more down bow than you use up bow. That will transport you towards the tip of the bow. And when you reach the tip, do the same thing. Practice it a little bit there. For nice smooth bow changes at the tip. The theme of Jeff Jack's 40 variations is about legato playing. So we're talking about smooth string crossings, smooth bow changes, and smooth bow strokes. 
We start off with the string crossings. One way of practicing string crossings is to practice them in double stops because what you really need is for your next finger to be down on the new string before the bow hits it so that the string crossing is smooth. So practice it in double stops. because it serves multiple purposes. First of all, of course, it's really good for your intonation. It's very, very good for stabilizing the hand position of the left hand. And it forces your next finger to be down on the next string before your bow hits it. So you're preparing the string crossing with your left hand. And it also forces you to prepare the string crossing with your right hand because you're traveling towards the new string um, very smoothly. instead of having a jerky string crossing because you're coming from too far away. So I can really recommend practicing all string crossings and double stops and scales and whatever, all your legato passages everywhere. It does absolutely wonders. The next thing we're talking about are smooth bow changes. That's about the finger action of the right hand. One way of practicing them is to practice them exaggeratedly slowly and also to practice them quite a lot because they're really difficult. So particularly at the frog, a smooth bow change at the frog is one of the most difficult things in violin playing. So practice it like this. And then the same at the tip. then if you do that a while, you get really nice smooth bow changes. For smooth bow strokes, one way of practicing them is to vary the dynamics. That's when you're working with the three components of sound. So what you can do is you can start piano and make a crescendo on the down bow and a decrescendo on the up bow. That would be... You start forte and make a decrescendo on the down bow and a crescendo on the up bow. That's easier because the bow is heavier at the frog than it is at the tip, so that way around is more natural, so you probably have to practice the other way around a bit more often. Then you can do uh, Crescendo and a decrescendo on each bow. And the reverse, a decrescendo and a crescendo on each bow. is by exaggerated practice. Exaggerated practice is often done if you have something difficult you make it more difficult for yourself so that then what you actually have to do is nice and easy. In this case this theme becomes more difficult the slower you play it because the slower you play it the more bow control you need. So one way of practicing it is to practice it ultra slow. As slow as you can where you can just still manage to have a smooth stroke. Very difficult. so on. You will have a lot of bow control if you practice that for a while and if you play it normally it will feel very free and easy. A 
And another way to practice smooth bow strokes is to practice with the bow about one centimeter above the string. That's very difficult because you're carrying the full weight of the bow and it's not resting on the string as it normally is when we're playing. So you practice with the bow one centimeter above the string. Very difficult to control. Remember the string crossings so that you have the right angle of the bow to the string. Okay, I hope this is useful for you. If you have any suggestions or if you'd like me to go more in depth into any of these aspects, let me know in the comments. The next, very, uh, the next video I'm going to do on bow technique will be on the first variation, which is all about finger action of the right hand and bow control at the frog. So, hope I see you there.